Today, we've got at least five ways to do de-essing in Bitwig Studio. I'm gonna start off with the best one first, so you don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to, if you just wanna get straight to the point. But first, we need to ask the question, what is an S? Which sounds like a stupid question, but it really isn't. And I know from hundreds of hours of video editing, hundreds of painful hours, that an S or any other noise-based consonant like a K or a T or a CH or the noise in the J or the G, they're bursts of noise, but they happen separately from the consonants. And that's an important piece of information to remember because it affects how we approach vocal de-essing. So I've got this really, really annoying loop that I recorded. It's got some really nasty S's in it. So let's listen to it. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. So S's aren't awful, but they're bad. They're bad. And if you turn up the volume or if you're listening on very uh, tinny speakers or little headphones, that's going to be annoying to listen to. So what we can do to see what we've actually got, um, this is the same loop but I've cut it up into vowels and consonants where all the consonants are S's or SH's. So here's all the vowels. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. And here's all the S's. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. Although there's a tiny bit of overlap, the S's happen on their own and the vowels happen on their own and there's not much overlap. And that is also true for things like K's and T's, where you will see that the K or the T is a burst of noise that happens on its own, separate from the vowel of the syllable that the vocalist is saying. I'm going to start off with my favorite and what I think is the best approach in Bitwig, but this will also work for any other music software because the approaches that I'm showing here are very generic. So this isn't just for Bitwig, right? Let's open up uh, Dynamics. So I'm not using the gate here. Um, as you can see, the gate ratio is set to one, so it's not doing anything. This is my default Dynamics patch, but I'm gonna go through every setting, so it doesn't matter what your default is. The ratio, I'm gonna set it to a very hard ratio of 10. Knee, I'm gonna set to zero. I'm gonna lower the threshold a bit for now. Uh, I'm going to set it to peak, but in this compressor, there's not a huge difference between peak and RMS. So I tend to leave it on peak for everything. In theory, RMS should reduce the distortion slightly, but in practice, I tend to find it doesn't make a huge difference. So we're going to set the attack to the fastest, release to the fastest time as well, although we might fiddle around with that later. Then we're going to click on the side chain effects. And you can see here, I've already got an EQ2. And this is because my default preset already has an EQ2 with these settings on it for my convenience. But if you don't have that EQ2 there, here we go. I've just added it. The high band we want to turn off and the low band, it's going to be set to a high pass filter and the corner frequency 7,000 Hertz. And the Q is just going to be on the default. Now, the S's are noise and they cover up quite a lot of the spectrum. In fact, if we look at the S's um, in the analyzer, we can see we've got a lot of stuff starting at 2K. There's some low frequency noise as well. The reason why I'm putting this uh, high pass filter in the side chain higher than where the noise actually is, is because it doesn't so it doesn't matter so much that you have the whole noise. It's more of a separating the noise from the vowels. But you can always change this around. It depends on the, the singer. You might want it higher for female singers and lower for male singers. But I tend to start with 7K and experiment. So she sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. Let's get this to repeat. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 So that would be the setting that I would go for. And obviously it depends what it sounds like in the mix. And obviously I'm not a singer and I've just recorded this. You really need to listen in the context of a mix to make your decision. But if you DS too much, it doesn't matter a huge amount because you can recover a little bit with EQ. But if you don't DS enough, that's a problem that you can't really fix afterwards. So uh, here's with it off. She sells seashells on the sea. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. And here's with it on. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. She's and we can see by the diagram that it's only hitting the S's. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. 
and Bitwig gives us this graph to show that it is recovering for the vowels. And it might sound darker, but it's not really touching the vowels. The darkness is kind of an illusion because it's not really affecting the vowels because they're not triggering the compressor. So really you can push this further than you might think and then you can get more brightness with EQ. And then when you go to EQ the brightness uh, and bring up some brightness, it's going to be really nice and smooth in my experience. Obviously you can DS too much, but I would not worry about DSing too much. So that is my go-to approach. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. There is a plugin that does this. And obviously this is not part of Bitwig, but I'm going to show you this anyway. And this is Waves DSer. And I find Waves a bit annoying because I can't have the plugins authorized on my PC and laptop, which I find very irritating. This is my favorite DSing plugin, and I prefer it to even better plugins such as uh, Renaissance DSer or FabFilter DSer. I prefer this Waves one, but the authorization is irritating, but it's not part of Bitwig, and I'm not necessarily recommending it. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. But as you can see, my Dynamics plugin is trying to emulate exactly what this Waves plugin is doing, and it's mostly doing the same thing, but I just thought I would mention that. So approach number two is Bitwig's DSer. Now, Bitwig's DSO is a little bit of a weird one because it is level independent. So instead of our compressor patch that we've set up, which looks at the absolute level of the signal, Bitwig's DSO, as far as I can tell, compares the high frequency level to the overall level of the signal. And that relative balance is how it decides to reduce the volume of the signal or not. So she sells seashells on the seashore. 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 Now with my default filter of 7K, even with the amount turned up to 200%, it's not even doing anything. So uh, let's, let's lower this. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 Now we're getting a bit of DSing, but it's just not doing enough. And if we insert a tool before and afterwards, to give it more signal, we give it, let's give it 24 and then take away 24. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. Doesn't make any difference. So it's completely level independent, but I find it really hard to isolate and remove S's with this plugin because it seems to not do enough. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. Whereas with my Dynamics patch, I've got full control and I'm basically forcing it to do what I want. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 She sells seashells. And the fact that I have to lower the corner frequency means I'm not doing as much isolation. Because again, we're not looking for the frequency range where the noise is. We're looking for the frequency range where the difference between the noise and the vowels is the widest difference. And that's the key point that I'm trying to make here. Okay, so this is our standard approach. Let's try another approach. Our next approach is to duplicate this track. Remove the dynamics that we've done. I'm gonna disable this, but I'm gonna leave it there so we can compare it again. The duplicated track. I'm going to invert the phase. So now, even though these are both unmuted, we should get nothing. And now I'm going to use a gate. So I'm going to set the attack to fastest. I'm going to set the release to something that's quite fast. Let's just put it to five. We can play around with that later. Depth all the way up, and then we'll just adjust the threshold. But we need to add our EQ again. You can tell that I never use this gate because the default settings are nothing. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 So we're using a gate with the same sidechain EQ that we use for our dynamics approach, which is not disabled now. Now this track has just got the S's on it automatically and we're inverting the phase 
when we combine them, she sells seashells on the seashore, she sells seashells on the seashore. The S's are removed. If we lower the volume of the S's track, we can bring some of the S's back again. She sells seashells on the seashore, she sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore, she sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore, she sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore, she sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore, she sells seashells on the seashore. She sells So that's an approach that works if you don't have any good compressor or deesser plugins at all. This is an approach that works, but it's a bit tedious and it's not my favorite approach. And it works better if you have a much smoother gate that's maybe slightly better than this gate and has some look ahead or whatever. Nothing wrong with this gate, it's just not amazing. Let's just get rid of that because you're never going to find me using that approach. So the other approach is obviously just to cut things up. And this is slow and tedious, but this gives you direct control. This is what I've done already. This is what I would more often use for breaths. And quite often when layering lots of vocals, I'll only keep the breaths for one vocal track and delete the breaths on all layered or doubled vocal tracks. But for S's, this gives us complete control, or for T's or K's or any other noise-based consonant. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 Again, it's not perfect, but gives us total control of everything. Another approach that we can take is the classic approach. This is an approach that happens accidentally if you are using very, very old equipment. This is kind of an emulation approach that gives us a kind of vintage distorted S sound, which I wouldn't recommend most of the time, but if you want a bit of character or interest, it will work. So load up an EQ, high frequency. Let's set it to around five or four. Let's try four. Maximum gain, lower the Q a bit. Maybe bump this up to five instead. And then we're going to duplicate this EQ, but we're going to cut instead. Then we're going to use the standard distortion plugin. Now, this is my default patch for distortion. I'll explain this drive knob in a minute, but symmetry is to the middle, DC is off, slew is to maximum, mix is 100% um, and width is 100%. This drive macro button, you can see that it's increasing the drive and lowering the output gain by the same amount. So let's see what this does. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 She sells sea. So that gives us some very vintage DSing, which personally, again, I would never use. But if you're trying to emulate equipment that would not need DSing in the first place because it was rubbish, this is an approach you can take. Let's also try something else. Here I've got my default distortion patch. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. And I'm just going to lower the slew rate. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 She sells se she sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. And that has kind of a similar effect in that it ends up distorting high frequencies, not as cleanly as uh, the first approach. But that's another thing you can try. And the final approach, which some people take and is not ideal, is, and we don't need FX3, we just need FX2. All right. So let's set this crossover to round about 4K. She sells seashells on the seashore. And you can see I've put a peak limiter on the high band and nothing on the low band. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 This is going to reduce the S's, but unfortunately, it's also going to change the tone of the S's. So an S might sound more like an SH because you're not reducing the volume of the entire signal equally. You're only reducing the volume of the high frequencies and not the low frequencies. So this is not ideal, but on a lot of old tape machines, they had a noise reduction system which was based on multiband. And this was often used as an effect 
to boost the high frequencies in a very smooth and consistent way. And obviously you can use any dynamic EQ or multiband compressor for this. Personally, I think FabFilter Pro MB does this really well, but you don't need that. You can do it in Bitwig. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 You can hear the tone of the S's wrong, and an S sounds like an SH, which is not what we want. But if we turn this back up again, she sells seashells on the seashore, she sells seashells on the seashore. We can get a bit of brightness. If we turn this off and we use our standard DSing approach, she sells seashells on the seashore, she sells seashells on the seashore. And then combine this with our multi band, we can get a kind of exciter. She sells seashells on the seashore, she sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. She and if we change this up to something like 8K, and we'll have to adjust the threshold here. She but, sells and unfortunately, the threshold here doesn't quite go low enough. So we're going to have to uh, do some pre and post emphasis. She sells seashells on the seashore. 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 She sells. So here we're doing de-essing and vocal enhancement, but I would be very, very careful with vocal enhancement. I would only listen in the mix and I would check it on a lot of different speakers and I wouldn't do it for voiceovers. I would only use this approach for specific genres of music where it's the right thing to do because you can get used to the sound of any kind of enhancement and then you can push it too far and then someone else who's not used to it listens to it and they're like, why is this so bright? So I can't remember exactly how many different approaches that is, but if you take anything from this video, it's one, S's and noise-based consonants like T's and K's happen separately from vowels, which means that multiband processing is unnecessary and can sometimes not be the right thing, but it can be a really cool enhancement. And the easiest way to do de-essing is with a fast compressor with a hard knee and a high-pass filter in the sidechain. And most of the time, that will get you what you want.